evening, and welcome to the Free Thought Forum. I know the introduction you saw there was was inaccurate. It's our every other week we uh, change change off. And I guess we didn't get that corrected. So, uh, welcome to the Free Thought Forum. This is a call-in show, as you can see. Our phone number is on the bottom there. And once again, we'll go through our disclaimer, saying that anything you hear on here is uh, the, the opinions of the people speaking, that is, the people on the panel or the callers. And don't blame White Rose Television for anything anybody says wrong. And we have Jason here Hello. again. And uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about was uh, an event that uh, Pennsylvania non-believers held last week up in Camp Hill. We had Bishop McFadden, who is the bishop, Catholic bishop of uh, this diocese, which I understand covers York and Harrisburg and other parts. And uh, he, sp he spoke to us about his views on, on some things. We asked him some questions. We didn't have a little follow-up on the questions, so we just, just got his answer and his perspective on things. And I know, Jason, you had some comments about things he said. Yeah, well, I guess probably everybody in the room had some comments, but <laughs> yeah, like you said, yeah. we didn't really get to... Uh, yeah. It was a structured format where people wrote their questions down on, on a card, and then uh, a guest moderator would then ask the bishop our questions. Uh, so we didn't, you know, and then he would give his answer and there was no opportunity for follow-up. So it was left, you know, uh, most people in the room were left with their own thoughts without really getting a chance to, there was too many of us to really uh, speak to him at, you know, once it was over. But yeah, there were some interesting, I don't know, some interesting things that he said. But it was definitely cool that it happened. Uh, I think everybody appreciated the event. I mean, even him, you know, it was it was really cool. Well, it's, it was big of him to come down to meet a bunch of, ang he thought, angry atheists, I guess. <laughs> we, we weren't that angry. Yeah. But uh, that's the perception, I think, is that a lot of atheists are angry people. And uh, you know, he, looks, he was brave to, of him to come down. And I think he uh, said he may want to do something like this again. Yeah. So. Uh, if you're interested, watch uh, Pennsylvania Nonbelievers' website. We may have an announcement of when he's going to speak again. If you have any questions for him, you can always ask him. Plus, uh, you know, we do have some atheists who are kind of angry, and there was, I guess, some some, some concern on the people who are running it that <laughs> you might get somebody up there doing something crazy. Yeah. So you never know. <coughs> so it was, but uh, he, he touched on a lot of topics. Uh, of course, some of them are, to the Catholic Church are, are very important, like abortion, and. Uh, one question that he kind of ducked was, um, you know, many places priests have refused to give communion to uh, people who, uh, Catholics who support abortion. Mm. Now, that's against Catholic doctrine. It shouldn't have, but they do give it to people who are in favor of the death penalty. That's also Catholic doctrine that you, they're against mm. the death penalty. So why the despair? He didn't really answer why uh, they refuse some people who are in favor of. Are, are pro-choice, but yet people who get the de are in favor of the death penalty can go right ahead and yeah. receive the sacraments. And I guess that's what they call them, the sacraments. Our producer knows more about that than I do. She has a lot of education, a lot of Catholic education. So, uh, but uh, you know, that's a, it's, that's curious for us. To, it seems like kind of hypocritical to some of us that you could take that stance. But yeah, that's I didn't know about that. But yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, because. Yeah, because like he was saying, uh, when he was talking about abortion, he was, you know, saying about life, uh, promoting life is like the yeah. the the most important thing right. apparently. Um, so I would think the corollary to that would be extinguishing it would be the, think the so. worst. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know. Yeah. So but, yeah, I mean yeah, if you're gonna withhold communion. From one, then you should hold, withhold it from yeah, the other. Yeah, you think so. That would make sense. Doesn't seem consistent, does it? Yeah. No, yeah. not at all. Yeah. <laughs> but and he probably uh, has some explanation for it. The thing, I mean, here we're going to talk about uh, about the night and, and things he said, but he isn't here to... to yeah, he's not here to yeah. defend himself. He, he, he has, well, Catholics have their, their reasons. Like I said, we think they're inconsistent, but... Um, they probably think we're inconsistent. Yeah. yeah. Well, usually in those situations, when you point out an inconsistency, they'll... Not just Catholics, but anybody, not even just religious people, but but anybody, they'll sort of uh, start creating this weird way of 
uh, you yeah. know, working around uh, yeah. something that they know is untrue, you know, or, or something they know is wrong or whatever. I guess we all do it, but yeah. when it comes to matters of, you know, what laws should be passed, you know, I don't think we should. The, the church shouldn't be involved. That's why we have a separation yeah. of church and state. Yeah. And, as, you know, many people who are pro-choice who don't think abortion is wrong are anti-death penalty. So they probably see an inconsistency there. Yeah. Saying, well, if you're going to kill the baby, you know, we, to us it's not a baby. And I'm pro-choice. It's not a baby yet. It's a, you know, it's a potential life. Yeah. But it, uh, and of course, as people who are pro-choice would point out to you that a lot of abortions happen spontaneously. So if you believe in a supreme yeah. being, you believe in God, you can say God's performing the abortion. You know, yeah. He gets more abortions than anybody. A lot, yeah. of, it, a lot of it happens just, you know, it's, Things yeah. happen. Things go wrong. You know? I remember in, in health class <clears throat> in high school, uh, we learned something like uh, something like in an average woman's lifetime, she'll have like six or seven miscarriages. I, I don't remember what the figure wow, is, but, but without yeah. ever knowing, right? Like, oh, okay. You, like it won't even get very far at all. Like yeah. you just, she just wouldn't know. Yeah. You know? But yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. That, uh, but like I said, that's one of the inconsistencies we see. And of course, he also touched on vouchers. Yeah, he had some good points on that. Um, in a lot of his comments, he he tried not to rely on, um, I think, where it was available to him. He he tried to um, not rely on solely like religious uh, motivated right. arguments for right. or against something, which was good because with that voucher thing, there's there are a bunch of arguments for and against it that have nothing to do with, with right. religion at all. Right. And, and he, he did rely on some of those things. But he had said something about, uh, he, was, he was saying that, why do we allow the government to have monop a monopoly in, in education? Which is, I, I don't, they don't. Well, they, no, they don't. You can go to private school. Yeah, there are, yeah, there are yeah. private schools. They yeah. do exist. Yes. Like, so I don't, I'm not sure what his point was there. Well, Maybe he meant with tax money or something? I don't know. Yeah. Well, now, for instance, our daughter went to uh, private schools for most of her education, and we paid for it. But that was our choice. She could have gone to the public school all along, but she went to a private school, which eventually, 10th grade, she didn't like it at all, so we, she went to public school after that. But, you know, we, pay, and we paid. We were living in Baltimore at the time, and some of the private schools are pretty expensive, so it, it was a sacrifice, but we did it for her. You know, and if... Uh, if you really want it, you'll figure out a way to get it done, I think, for most people. Now, some people are at the poverty level. They simply can't. Yeah. And that's one of the excuses uh, my wife says for not liking this, is saying that, well, some of these vouchers, they're minimal. You're not going to the very top schools yeah. with these. You know, you're limited. And, and one of the things, when they talk about public schools and private schools, getting, private schools getting better education, public schools have to take every student who walks through the door. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's a different a private school size doesn't that. have to. They can afford to be discriminatory. Yeah, they can say... Well, they, no, have, they have a price tag. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they well, can discriminate right there. Yeah. Well, first of all, if you're sending your child to a private school, that shows me that the parent cares. They've made... Well, and that they have the means to do it. They have the means... Not only do they have the means to do it, but they care. Yeah. They care enough that they, they want their child to, to get a good education, a different education than they would get in a public school. Whereas parents who don't care, first of all, they hardly ever send their kids to school. They miss a lot of school days. They've seen situations like that, and they don't really care about their education, so just go to the public school, and who cares what happens? Yeah, that, well, yeah, but that's not like every... Not everyone, but there's, yeah. there's plenty of them out there. But well, if you're, yeah. you're really concerned, and a lot of the private schools have uh, scholarships. They, they give yeah. uh, scholarships to needy students, so there, there are ways for people to get in there if, if they really want to. But to me, the answer is improve the public schools. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. And like he was saying about, um, he used as an example, um, inner city school districts always right. underperform in, in pretty much any benchmark you would have for them. Um, but if you had a private school that had to take just, like if you, if we could run an experiment, like you could have the administration of, of any private school um, take over one, take over an inner city school mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Right. And, and let's see how much better they, like they yeah. might do a little better but it won't yeah. be much better yeah. like it's yeah. just harder there was some yeah. study that showed um, kids whose parents uh, read with them yes. outside of school right. um, always perform better right. you know? I 
that and was that's Tom, just yeah. that's not gonna <clears throat> that's not gonna change. I mean, so there you're talking about there's all these other things in the culture that right. these kids are living in that has to change in order for their schooling to also change. I don't know if you read Thomas Friedman in the New York Times on Sunday. That's the point he made. He said we need yeah we, yeah we need good teachers, but we need better parents. Yeah, the parents. <laughs> excuse me, are failing the children too. Yeah. And he brought up that study about children who read to them, and oh, yeah. there are a lot of statistics in there about how much better they do in school. And it just makes sense. If you've, uh, you've read to a child from the time they were born, little, you know, you, you, the, uh, first of all, the appreciation for reading, which is very important, yeah. despite what Herman Cain says about we don't need a reader, we need a leader. Well, we need <laughs> a reader. You've got to read. You've got to read to compre- to get information. And uh, the uh, the... I'm not an expert on this, but the brain, uh, the more you educate it, the more thoughts you put in it, it just, it, 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 the brain evolves, yeah. you know, it develops, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it wants to do more of whatever. Yeah. That's why you should be taking your small children to museums and uh, things like that, zoo, and just places where they learn things, you know, not yeah. just not just fun and games, not just watching uh, yeah, Bob TV. Squarepants, you yeah. know, I guess, where they say lowers IQ, so I don't know if that's true. Yeah. But showing things like that, like Sesame Street. Uh, I think our daughter watched Sesame Street. Most kids I know watch that. You probably watched it. I did not like Sesame Didn't Street. Like I just it was. Well, that's why know. you're an atheist, I guess. <laughs> that's maybe no, that's I watched the, other things. Yeah. I like the <laughs> Inspector Gadget. <laughs> and yeah. Stuff like that. Don, yeah. yeah, Don Adams, right? Yeah. But yeah, he was going on about the, you know, the school vouchers thing. I don't know. There, there's a lot of interesting arguments about it. But like there, like like how you said with with your example, um, like you you had your daughter go to a mm-hmm. private school, but you were also paying um, right. public school taxes at yeah. the same oh, time. Yeah. 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 So in a way, like you were paying twice yeah. for for that education. But so that's I could see someone saying like, well, that's yeah. not fair. Like why why should I send my kid to a public school if I'm already paying for for them to get schooled somewhere else? You know? Why, well, my, my answer to that would be that that's your choice. Yeah, you, know, you chose to. Just like we have public, uh, a lot of public facilities, and if you choose not to use them, you choose to go somewhere else and do something privately. That, that's up to you. Yeah. And as far as the public schools, for uh, like man, senior citizens now, sometimes say, "My kids are out of school. Why should I pay for the schools?" Yeah. Because an educated society benefits us all. Yeah, that's kind of how I look at that yeah. too. Yeah. Is like We're, we have to make yeah. sure we have to raise the. What's that one saying? Uh, the tide raise, uh, uh, rising tide. Rising tide floats all boats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you have to bring the lowest common denominator should yeah. be as high as we possibly can. Yes, make. right. Uh, you know, in this world, uh, we're competing. Uh, you hear about kids in India and China, and yeah, you know, studying there all hours of the day and night, and you know, they're go- they're going to be ahead of us. Yeah. And for, for as the, a result, like that, yeah. all affects things way down. Like, yeah. twenty years yeah. at a time. Yeah. You know, thirty, yeah. forty years at a time. Like so. If education fails more and more and more, there'll be less jobs because yeah, there'll yeah. be less people here who are educated to well, enough to create businesses and yeah. things like that. You know, yeah. like all these different things happen, all because, well, I don't got a kid in school. Why should I pay? Well, yeah. then you end up with yeah. a crumbling society. So, yeah, <laughs> so that's yeah. It's uh, education is important. That everyone be educated. We want the, as you say, the lowest educated person to be way up here, not down here. You know, yeah. and when I hear some of these people who are kind of anti-education say, you know, they don't like book learning, you know. You know, book learning is important, you know. The, believe me, we, uh, the businesses that have been created recently, you know, uh, look at what Bill Gates has done and Paul Allen yeah. started, you know, Microsoft. Uh, they had some book learning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing is it's, it, it's a form of, you know, knowing about the, the world and, and reality and the universe and, yeah. and the things around you. Um, and maybe that may, might play in, well, it probably does play into you know, theism and, and atheism and things like that. I mean, if you're going to, uh, like, if you're going to not pursue questions and not look for the answers, um, you're kind of shutting the world off, yeah. you know, and not learning about reality and things like that. And if you don't have this one, of the, this one book that you want to learn, if you want to learn just the Bible yeah. or just the Quran or just yeah. Scientology, Dianetics or whatever, um, which gives you a set of sort of answers, then you're not going to value all these other books. You know, the rest of the yeah. library may not really mean that much to you since why, why should you? It's kind of like, you know, 
the same as the why should you pay uh, for for these other books when you've already got this one you know, that kind of a thing but. yeah we need uh, we need everyone educated we're not going to compete on the world level with uh, kids who don't know anything uh, you know, and you hear now you hear that the unemployment rate is 9.1 percent that there are a lot of jobs going begging because people just don't have the skills to fill those jobs yeah. That's what we and we need people. If we could get the unemployment rate down, uh, many people have said that would take care of this deficit problem. More people paying taxes, yeah, that will that will and take care of the deficit. Other things like well, if you're not educated, like even just a working class, if that has no, without an education on the histories of, of working struggles, of labor struggles, and things yeah. like that, they could be exploited yeah. by people yeah. who do know how yes. that went yeah. down. You know. Yeah. Um, and all those different, in the interplay of, of those sorts of politics and things like that. You should be educated so that you don't get exploited. You know? Well, there's a saying in politics that people get the government they deserve. And if you're not paying attention and you're not, to me, voting is very important, but if you're not educated on, thing and on what's going on in your community and just educated in general, you're not going to be a very good voter. And yeah. you'll end up getting incompetent people in office. And now, of course, politics is so polarizing that a lot of people, you understand, don't run just for that reason. They don't want to be, um, they don't want to get involved, you know. It's, yeah. uh, uh, we, can, we can get on politics, but we could go on for a long time on that. <laughs> but this is a show about atheism. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to call us. Uh, if you, really, if you have any comments, any questions, or you just want to tell us how, how wrong you think we are, you know, we get those calls once in a while. Yeah. But you can let us know. So... There was one thing uh, the bishop mentioned. He, he, he was talking about, this was earlier on in the evening, um, he mentioned uh, freedom of conscience, and with that, that's basically to say that people should be free to think what they want to think. They should be free to develop their own ideas and their own opinions um, without, with as little coercion as possible. Um, and they should not be forced to... Well, you can't really, I don't know if you can force somebody to believe something. Well, you could lie to them, I guess. That would yeah. be the closest thing to forcing. But they should be free from coercion um, to, in their preferences and their ideas and their opinions um, as much as possible. Um, which is something a lot of secular philosophers have, have talked about. There's a, a current uh, philosopher, he's, his name's Austin Dacey. He wrote a book called The Secular Conscience. And it talks about it talks about uh, freedom of conscience and all this stuff, um, like which is basically it plays into freedom of, of religion. You should be free to believe um, whatever conclusions you can can come to, you know, whatever they may be. You know, even if they're wrong, you should still be free. You know, you should be free to be as dumb as you want to be, <laughs> you know, or or free as to be as as, as intelligent as you want to be. But it should be up to you and not decided by some other group or some other person. Um, but, you know, so the bishop was discussing the importance of that. But then he said uh, that either him or, like, either him personally or the, or the church does not believe that freedom of religion means freedom from religion, which would necessarily mean that you have to be of a religion, you know. Right. That's, yeah. Which would not be that's a not free, free conscience. That, yeah, that's you know? right. And I wrote a question down real quick, and yeah. that ended up getting asked to him. I, I said, you know, if if freedom of conscience is important and freedom of religion doesn't mean freedom from religion, then how does that, you know, how isn't that a contradiction? I can't remember how I worded the question, yeah. but it was basically that. And his response was that, well, atheism is a religion. That was his way around. Like, yeah. that's, that's that, okay, these things do not make sense together. Um, so I'll build this weird thing around it to make it work. Yeah, yeah. we're not a religion. We're it's the lack of a religion. Yeah. Like how, how, if you can say, "Not a microphone is a microphone," then what does it mean to be a microphone? Like, what does it mean to to not be a microphone? Like, it violates the laws of thought and, and identity that Socrates and Plato. Like these these things were figured out thousands of years ago. It's basic thought and, and, and stuff. And the Catholic Church, they are big on education. You know, they, they yeah. do, they aren't, they do value uh, 
education and, and understanding the world and philosophy and all these things. To say that the lack of a, the, the lack of that not a equals a is just. Oh, yeah, I was a, getting really frustrated. Yeah, the A, uh, A on atheist is A, non-theist. We're not, we're not theists. Yeah. We don't believe in a supreme being. And if we don't have, if, I mean, there is no, and this is another problem w with that issue. Okay, here is, the event was a group of atheists um, having a guest who was a, he's a bishop, he, which is mm -hmm. just uh, someone of a, of a certain status. Yeah. With, he has a certain position within this other organization. We don't have that at all we don't have we are not a religion we don't have a hierarchy of, of leadership and and rules and doctrine and and all these things we don't have councils of, of Nessay and we don't have Archbishop of Canterbury we don't have any of that we don't have there is none of that because there's nothing to build any of that on other than the answer to one question which is do you think there's a God no okay that's it You're an atheist. You know, yeah do you play chess no okay <laughs> That's okay, not yeah. a part of. That doesn't mean you're you're a religion. Right. You know, not being a sport does not is is not a sport. You know, like it just yeah. isn't. But we can't have the bishop of atheism invite <laughs> a bunch of Catholics to to or a bunch of Catholics can't invite a, a bishop of atheism to come and explain atheism to the to them or to answer questions about atheism to them because there's no singular right. philosophy amongst us all. We it's it's all just individuals. Everybody's different. The only thing that we have in common is that we don't, we have the same answer to that one question. That's right. the only thing we have in common, right. which is a little yeah. frustrating. We, uh, yeah, we uh, experience that in our group. <laughs> we have a lot of different opinions, don't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we don't have, uh, if they, if they want to have someone come and speak to them, they can have one of us come or invite Dave Silverman. He's a good speaker. He's yeah, the president of American Atheist, my, but he's not the, but yeah, he's he's still, not, he doesn't represent all of us. Yeah, yeah like, and none of us represents no. all of us. Uh, only well, when it comes to that opinions. one question. Yeah, we can give our opinions. Yeah. Uh, most atheists are rather opinionated. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. That they are. And, uh, you know, the, the bishop did uh, mention that there are some things that you have to believe to be a Catholic. Exactly, At some yeah, point, yeah. He said there's a criteria. Yeah. Know, there's a list of yeah. things that distinguishes a Catholic from a Mormon or from yeah. a Hindu or right. from, like, that. Yeah. That's how that is. Well, some people I think, consider themselves Catholics that you kind of wonder, why are you a Catholic? Uh, yeah. Like, well, pro-choice Catholics. <clears throat> you know, I'm glad they're there because I'm pro-choice, but are they really Catholics? If, yeah, at, at, at some point, there's, you, you, you understand you don't have to believe everything the Catholic Church says, but there must, there are kind of have to be certain things that you got to believe. Like to be an atheist, you got to believe there's. If you say, "Well, I believe in God," well, you're not an atheist. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> that, that, that's yeah, that's that the only thing. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're not an atheist. Simple as that. If you yeah. say you're a Catholic but you don't believe in God, you're not, you're a, not Catholic. a Catholic. No, that's, you're not a Catholic. I'm sorry. That's, you're a former that's the Catholic. One yeah. single. Uh, yeah. There's this comedian, um, David Cross. He he talks about in his one stand-up. He he talks about how he's Jewish. Um, not because he believe he, he doesn't believe in God, so you know that you would think that would you know the whole idea is predicated on that one issue whether or not you believe, you have to believe in God first before you even get into the rest of it. But apparently, it just matters if your mother was a, yeah. was a Jew, right. uh, then then you're Jewish, which is completely ridiculous. Like how? But then it gets into yeah. ethnicity yeah. rather yeah. than cultural or whatever. Yeah, is Jewish an ethnic or is it a religion? Yeah. That yeah. When you say you're Jewish, you know, because we have a lot of people who are raised Jew or Jewish or atheists now. You know? yeah. well, obviously, Dave Silverman. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Carl Silverman. We have a lot of Silvermans. We've got a few other Silvermans. There's a lot, of, a lot yeah. of Jews that just don't like being Jews. No, no. Well, they, <laughs> just they start thinking about it and they, hey, I don't believe there's a guy up there pulling the strings, you know. Yeah. Uh, Which is fair. You know, they yeah. should be allowed to do that. But, but uh, I mentioned Catholic education. Uh, now, I understand from my recovering Catholic wife that they never did believe the Bible to be literally true. They believe it to be story, allegories, I guess, and maybe she can correct me if I'm going off here. Uh, allegories. and it, they, they don't believe it to be literally true like some evangelicals do. Yeah. They don't believe that there were literally the flood and everything flooded and all that. They believe they're just stories. And that makes more sense to me than to believing these things are literally true, you know. Yeah. Adam and Eve. And, uh, you know, uh, do you think that's because um, like, do you think that's because the Catholic Church is basically uh, like 
it's ancient Rome with, under new management, and, and you know, and there was such a deep, yeah. rich tradition of, of learning and philosophy. So they, they knew, like, well, this stuff is obviously a little. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there, there's no way that yeah, actually yeah, yeah. happened. But you know, live inside a fish. The guy, you yeah, know, yeah, that, that, like that's not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. But yeah. but we should. We got to keep it there. But we shouldn't. Um, yeah. You know, if it really comes down to it, we're not going to say. That. But then again, I mean, they. It is an article of faith that you in the Catholic Church that you you have to believe that the 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 cracker is oh, body yeah. literally the body like that's written down on a document or yeah. whatever official. Yeah, document. it's hard to believe it's literal because that makes you a cannibal, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, eating all somebody's kinds of body. It's just but uh, the Catholic Church does some some strange things, like to us anyway, strange things like most religions. Uh, we were we visited uh, France a few years ago and went to Lourdes, you okay. know, where they did the miracles. First of all, beautiful scenery around there. Oh, it's just beautiful. And I had never really heard that story, but the story was that this little girl whose father was unemployed and they were at the time basically homeless well they, I think at that time they took homeless people into the prison so they lived in the prison you know they were not prisoners but they lived there and she had this her life was pretty bad you know and she saw the Virgin Mary I guess and uh, no one else saw it and even priests came down later and they never saw it either but but they're letting lords go on because they make a lot of money off yeah. it you see if you go there Rows and rows of shops. Now we were there in January, <laughs> so, so they were not a little open. Cottage industry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a big in the big industry. There are a lot of shops. Now we were there in January, so it wasn't open, so we didn't get to visit all the shops. But they sell all the it's trinkets. Seasonal. And Mary. Uh, well, has yeah. A, they, has a I went to. Uh, spot I guess so. Yeah. Warmer, yeah. I guess. yeah. I guess so. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, and then you see the. Uh, oh my God. You know the the <laughs> the crutches there that people threw away because they were cured. You know, but. Uh, and then you get some holy, you can get water, the holy water. Now, a lot of Catholics believe that that is really holy water, and it it's, does miracles. And we brought some back. I don't know if we, Pam, did we give that to your mother? Yes. Yeah, we gave some to her mother because she was a big Catholic. Now, how does and she know you didn't just bottle that up at the bathroom? At she, the trusts, she trusts her daughter. That's that faith, yeah. huh? Now, actually, they, they sell little things there that you can put the water in. And I bought some little bottles to put, put water in. And I didn't realize that you can take anything because one of the other People with us, they were also atheists from New Jersey. Uh, they filled up a Coke bottle, you know, with, with water, you know, with, with oh. holy water, this this super water. Is a, is and, well, how do they do? Is, is there like a natural spring there or something? Or? Pam, was there a natural spring? Yes. Yes, there's a natural so, spring. So, like yeah. a priest just blesses this. I, holy well, no, it, it, it's just, it, it doesn't even have to be blessed. It's just, that's it. It's the real thing. Well, how Lord's do you, water. Well, no, but how is something, what, how does water become <laughs> holy water? Oh, holy water, I think they have to priest. This is not. Well, Pam, this isn't holy water, is it? Not exactly. Not exactly holy uh, water. It's, so it's Lord's just water. Plain old but it's Lord's water. water. So that, right. believe me, you got some of that stuff. That's for next it. to holy water. Yeah, that, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, so how do they, they make holy that. water? That's just the priest got to say some words over it. I guess right? so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, some Latin or something that nobody knows what it is anyway. So. Well, why you're... don't they just like? Why don't Why don't they just bless the sky or something? So then all <laughs> water would just be holy water. Well, Pam, maybe you can answer that. <laughs> she she can't said answer, no. <laughs> she can't answer that one. Okay. Well, she's a Catholic. Because that would make sense. Yeah. You know? well, maybe yeah. maybe it would be like flooding the market. Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> there'd be yeah. too much that holy water, would, yeah. so it would lose its value. People would stop going to Lourdes. They'd have to come up with a new thing, yeah, like yeah. super holy water. But I think a lot of people make pilgrimages to, to Lourdes. Now, we yeah. just, we did, it was on the tour. We were touring around France, and it was part of the tour. And so we went there and kind of you know, got a kick out of it. But like I said, it's beautiful scenery there. Yeah, in yeah. um, Richard Dawkins' one, uh, that video he did, The Root of All Evil, oh, yes, he, yes. he stopped there yes. on the yeah, that's first true. part, I think. Well, that's, I guess if you're making the video, you've got to go to Lord's. Yeah. Yeah, you got to, to see that. Well, you probably went just but for there the scenery. Was, I remember, like, it, there was like a thousand, I don't know, there was oh, yeah, a lot of yeah. people there. He, pro he probably didn't go in January. <laughs> no, no, yeah. there was leaves on the trees. It looked yeah. pretty nice out. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, so it's closed in January. Like, how does that... Like, when you get into, like, the Virgin Mary has to operate around physical logistics, like, like I'm not it's too sure. cold out. Like, yeah, it's cold. It's, it's chilly. It's well, how can she bad. be too cold? I don't know. Like, what, I don't know why she's... Well, I guess she's not there. How does that not occur to anybody? Now, Pam, she's not there now, is she? Let's call her. She's everywhere. She's everywhere. Okay. Well, I guess she... But, well, she's not there in January. Then, Unless right? she has a Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so ridiculous once you yeah. actually start treating it as if yeah, it's real. Yeah. If you start talking about any of these things as if they are actually real, yeah. 
it's absurd. How, like, people wonder, like, how, how, could a, how could you be an atheist? I'm taking your own premises to yeah. their logical conclusions. It's yeah. madness. That's crazy. Who would think such a thing? Well, you have to have faith. Don't you understand? Right. you got to have faith. you got to be... Th- nah. You might as well say to me, well, you have to be stupid. Just, just stop being so smart. Stop yeah. thinking so much. Stop thinking. Yeah. Stop using your well, brain. Like well, I heard in religious. I went to a Lutheran school. We heard a lot. You, know, you have to have faith, mm. and you don't. You should. You know, you question things. It's terrible, <laughs> and uh, and that's that's it, it horrible. Remind, it does remind me of. I don't know if you ever saw with Pam. Was that nonsense? The where the nun mm. puts on a show, and uh, she acts like it's catechism class. Is that it, Pam? Yes. Yeah, and it's it's just on stage. She did it here in New York a few years ago, and. Uh, you know, it, it's very funny if you go. You don't yeah, have to be I've religious to go. It's very, yeah, yeah, she's lecturing kids, yelling at them. Uh, if you, if you don't behave, we'll send you to public school. You know, like <laughs> that's, that's the ultimate that you get sent to public school. Boy, you're, that's it for you. you know? But it's a very funny show, <laughs> by the way. Although we did have one friend who said he was very disturbed by it, right? Yeah, he was very disturbed by it because I guess it brought back memories of mm. when the nuns were beating him over the, yeah. the hands with the, the rulers and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I guess but, some people are traumatized by all that stuff. Yeah, the, the faith thing is, you know, you got to have... That's another thing, you know, uh, oftentimes people tell us how oh, God works this way. God did that. Like, God, if you fell and broke your leg, God's getting even with you. But then, you know, you explain somebody else had something tragic happen to them. They're a Christian. God works in mysterious ways. That's always their out. You know, that's always the... If you yeah, can't it's answer just a question, longer way of saying, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, God... It's mysterious. You know? I don't know, but it's not science. It's definitely not science. Yeah, it's right. definitely not medical science. Yeah. Definitely not that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just definitely how, not that. You know, when we look at it as atheists, we look at how the church, the religion, held back medical science, held back science in general. You know, the, the flat earth. The, well, there were some yeah. things, um, again, and that kind of goes back to, well, see, the Catholic Church is responsible for so much because it had a, a very oh, yeah. structured and organized yeah. network. You know, it was... One yeah. of the greatest corporations, you know. Yeah, well, it still is. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. So, it, and, and they were responsible for quite a deal of, of scientific breakthroughs um, that ended up, you know, will, or will be their undoing, you know, because of yeah. the knowledge that we get further yeah. from them. But, but yeah, but there are you know all those things like you know, with Galileo and all that, yeah. and then whatever a thousand years later they finally apologize. For that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that was I'm sure he appreciated that. Yeah. <laughs> Dead and gone. Yeah. Wow. It, uh, but, well, we have a bumper sticker that we saw mm-hmm. that says something to the effect of uh, there was a time when religion ruled the world. It was called the Dark Ages. Mm-hmm. And that's true. Uh, the Dark Ages were brought about. Of course, back then, priests were the pretty much the only educated people in the community. You know? Yeah. And you that's why at, it was so dark. There, there was no... Uh, yeah. And you look at some third world countries. I think I, I, think I read that Afghanistan is like one third of the people are literate. Yeah. Two thirds of the people aren't even literate. Yeah. So they don't even. So they just have to take the word of the the literate people of what they're reading. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah. It's that's kind of hard to understand when you're yeah. sitting at home, watching. You know, you're sitting in, in a home with with heat. Uh, you know, it's raining outside right yeah. now. You're sitting in in home, dry with heat in, in a city with paved roads and plumbing and electrical yeah. wires everywhere and. Yeah a flat screen TV and two guys sitting in front of cameras like <laughs> we have all this yeah. and, and they yeah. what are they doing right I, I used to get this cab driver when I wasn't driving uh, this, he was from uh, I think where's Al- Kashmir he was from or wait is that a real yeah that's in India that's that's what India is fighting over yeah. For a while, I thought they were fighting over coach, you know, because I have a cashmere coat at home. <laughs> well, it, it turns a, out it's a He place, was from a yeah. little, uh, a, a smaller country, like, I don't know, but it wasn't yeah. India, but it was one of those smaller ones right around there somewhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes uh, he would tell me about where he was from and, and how they had goats and cows and chickens and, and uh, you know, like there wasn't a, you know, it was a dirt floor, um, yeah. you know, all these things, and it's like, and now he's oh. riding around in a, in a, in a Lincoln it was a nice black Lincoln. That was his cab, um, with the GPS. You know, yeah. and, you know all these things. And it's like the world is so the world is so crazy. You know, all these different things yeah. that are available to you. Well, some people commented that uh, when we were in Afghanistan, we were going to bomb them th- back to the 16th century. So you know, that would be an upgrade for <laughs> them. They, yeah, they would they would they would appreciate that. You know, yeah. uh, it's, it's it's amazing. It's just some of the things you hear that go on over there. 
in the name of religion mostly, uh, honor killings. Uh, your daughter did something, so we you dishonored yeah. the family killer. Yeah, you wonder, are we on the same planet with these people? Are they well, when, I mean, it, to some extent, it's a little under, it's understandable in that if you don't have better education, I mean, like you said, you know, like yeah. one in ten or whatever are, are literate. You know, if you're going to have um, such low rates of education, it's not going to stop their brains. You know, like not having knowledge isn't going to stop your brain from from tr thinking and trying to to understand things. So they're trying to put the pieces together, right. but they have really bad stuff to work with. Right. So that's what you know. What happens with that is th these crazy, crazy things that yeah. we look at and we're like, why would you do that? Ba it's battery acid. That's going <laughs> to. You know, why would you? Why would you throw that on someone's face? Like, how yeah. could you think that is an acceptable thing yeah. to do? Well, but getting back to the parents who read, since these parents are illiterate, they're not reading to their children, yeah. they're probably, they probably do have some deficiencies, and that yeah. wouldn't explain everything, but I think it would explain some of it, that, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they don't develop the same way, you know, a lot of kids do in a lot of Western countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> and, and any development that would happen will take so much longer, yes. because yeah. it, the generations that they're standing on top yeah. of aren't, don't right. have that to provide. Yeah. The, uh, the fact that they, uh, how many of them go to school, if they go to school at all, they go for a few years. And, and a lot of countries don't want to educate the girls, yeah. which is very negative. Um, that, those are holding those societies back. You know, they're, um, like I said, it's hard. When you look at some of the third world countries and you hear these things, you think, how sad, how hard to believe we're the same species that we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then they, they demonize, and, and this kind of happens even here uh, amongst uh, the, the more devout people uh, will, will like demonize uh, learning or, or, yeah. or over there they'll demonize the West because you know look at all these things we have you know these yeah. all these things um, it's all of the devil you know or it's yeah. all yeah. it's all the great Satan or, or whatever yeah. you know they, they vilify all these things to associate it with with evil because it's from from the outside group that they also see as opposing them you know yeah. you know what, what all of the and then we become an excuse as to why they don't have uh, education or as to why they don't have uh, a high GDP or, or to whatever else. It, it'll always be our, our fault, whatever. But that can only, you know, it, whereas here, you know, the, the, the highly devout people like Westboro Baptists, you know, they're yeah. extremely <laughs> strong in their faith. Yeah. Um, they really, really believe their stuff. Um, and then, you know, they look around and everything that's going wrong is all because of the, the, Gay people, gay people, gay or, people or, the, yeah. or the secular yeah. agenda, or Hollywood, or whatever you know, whatever thing well, it would be. Yeah. You know. I think there are two big things: are abortion and homosexuals. Yeah, yeah. which is crazy. But you know, there are other countries where they do more abortions than we do, and um, there are gay people everywhere. I don't know. Well, for some reason, they think God is picking on us. Yeah. Killing of the soldiers—that's that, just insane. You know? yeah. And sometimes I wonder how deep their belief is, and are they just doing this for publicity? From and most of the stuff I hear about them, it, it seems like they'll do anything for publicity. Yeah. I mean, they'll—I yeah. mean, I don't know. That's the, but uh, speaking of gay marriage, there was uh, the, the bishop commented on that. He had said <laughs> that um, I guess the church would accept civil uh, unions, civil unions yeah. with. with Completely equal rights. Right. They just couldn't use well, the word yeah. marriage, which, which is um, there's a there, we already have a term for this. It's called separate but equal. Yeah. That, that's what. Yeah. We've already done that. Yeah. And, that did work. Yeah. Yeah. And it was yeah. now it's considered bigotry. Yeah. And it's still bigotry in this other context. So. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't know. It just baffles me why they are so upset about that gay marriage thing. There are, and there are so many people who are anti-gay. Of course, I think most of them are latent homosexuals. So well, and, and again, what happened yeah. to freedom of conscience? Yeah, you know, yeah. Why, yeah. Why? Yeah, let them. But you hear, you do hear about people who are. An, well, there was a, a congressman in uh, Maryland, Robert Bowman, who was uh, known for his anti-gay speeches. It turns out he was gay. Hmm. He. Uh, this happened years ago. They caught him in the down on New York Avenue in the bars, the gay bars, and also little boys were. Um, exploiting him uh, for money and of course this put him in a position where he had to hide his fact that he was gay to be blackmailed yeah that's the to me the biggest thing that can happen and he, at first he said look i'm an alcoholic that's what happened i drank too much well a lot of us drank 
we don't turn into homosexuals if we're heterosexuals yeah, when that we drink. never happened. No, that's, that's, uh, that so never happened. It was just ridiculous. And finally, he just came out and admitted that yes, I'm gay, and you know, it, it, but it's uh, it's you know sad that he couldn't come out beforehand. Yeah. And, well, he had built up, you know, that that image yeah, of, of right. Well, there were a lot of people. As a matter of fact, at one point, Barney Frank was in some trouble, who's yeah. openly gay, uh, which I don't even like the term openly gay. He's gay, you know, yeah. they're openly. But he, he's gay. He, uh, they were going to censure him for something he had done. I think it was sexual exploits with someone who was, he was still he was still in the closet at this point. And uh, Barney said, uh, he said, if you censure me, I am going to name names, including Republicans. And they did not censure him. <laughs> That was the end of that. <laughs> there are plenty of, plenty of uh, secrets uh, down there that they don't want you to know about. Uh, one of them was a fellow who was caught in the men's room in, in Minneapolis airport, uh, Craig. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the now, foot tapping thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he's, you know, he tried to claim that, uh, well, he's not really gay. He was, he was just in the men's room. But this was a men's room that was known for that. Yeah. And the undercover officer who I, I assume is not a moron, he knows what he's looking for. And he, he knows what he saw. <laughs> yeah. He knows what was going on. So he's trying to cover yeah. it up. Yeah. The cops, and, I mean, the, the cops, that's the same as, like, gang signs or anything yeah, like that. You right. know, they, 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 they understand yeah. what yeah. they're doing. As a matter of fact, there have been rumors about this fellow for years, about Craig, that he's gay. Well, why? So, what, I mean, I remember when that happened, but I don't remember now what that was. Why was that such a big deal? Well, he got arrested. And oh, because he, he was basically soliciting. Yeah, that was basically. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And he got arrested, and he tried to cover it up. He tried to keep it out of the press, but somebody got wind of it, as they always do, you yeah. know. Uh, and uh, and especially nowadays, everything's out. Yeah. You know, which brings me to another thing: the University of California Davis, the people spray uh, pepper spraying the students. Yeah. You know, come on, police officers, don't you know everybody's. There's all kinds of people with cell phones who take pictures. Yeah. They recorded it. And they, then the first, the, the, the chief of police, she tried to say they, they felt threatened. But well, we saw the video. There was no, nobody well, threatening anybody. What happened. Uh, oh, they were, well, the, it was, uh, students were having a sit-in. Yeah, the Occupy. Because uh, they were upset. Occupy Wall Street. They were, well, students were doing a... Yeah, and they were more upset, I think, over tuition raises. But they were sitting there peacefully, just sitting there. And they came along and just sprayed them. Pepper they were, spray. It was a demonstration. Yeah, it was a demonstration, were, yeah. yeah. But it was not violent at all. And yeah. the police officers were not being threatened. And they just walked along spraying them. If anybody yeah. hasn't seen it, go to YouTube. You yeah, can see I, it. I saw still images yeah. of it in, in an article. It was just crazy. I mean, the, yeah. kid, the kids are just sitting on the ground. Yeah. just with. I yeah. guess they had their arms locked. Yeah, they had their arms sure. crossed. Yeah, most had their arms okay. crossed. And, there. and yeah, there's a cop. There's, He's yeah. just walking yeah. by, just spraying them. Yeah, just it was like, what are you doing? So, like, they claim he was doing anything. Yeah, he was threatened. How was he threatened? They were sitting there, but once again, police should know by now. People have cameras all over the place. They're taking, yeah, you know, almost yeah. anything you do out in public is being filmed. I mean, um, just assume that you're walking down the street, somebody, yeah. somebody's taking a picture of you, yeah. somebody, or, or they will. It used to be the only people taking pictures of you were the cops or, yeah. or people like that, but no, now it's it's everybody's yeah. got yeah. a cell phone. The camera and yeah. it'll be on YouTube in five seconds. Like yeah. it'll oh, instantly yeah. be up. Some of, on the yeah, internet. not not from me because I don't know that technical stuff. Yeah, I can't do any of that stuff. Somebody will do it. Yeah, there's plenty Tupac, of people out there. Uh, you probably heard of Tupac. I heard of Tupac. Yeah, he's, he's he pretty was, well known. But he used to ride around with a uh, with a camcorder um, in in the vehicle mm -hmm. just in case they saw a cop pulled someone over yeah. because that was like right after the Rodney King thing and all right. that. And it, the one thing that you know, it was a big deal in that trial was that there was video. Yeah. You know, up until yeah. then, that kind of thing could happen but, all the yeah. time. And yeah. But he would ride around with the camera to, and if they ever saw cops anywhere, they would stop and he, <laughs> they would get out and someone would have to videotape. He should have filmed those guys who eventually got him, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah they should have. Well, that's a whole Yeah, that's another matter. That's East Coast, was that East Coast, West Coast? I'm not a rapper. I don't know much about rapping. So yeah, there's all kinds of theories. Yeah. That's a whole other thing. I don't even want to get <laughs> yeah. to. That's not, that doesn't, uh, shouldn't concern us as atheists, should it? <laughs> well, it should concern us as human beings, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But, or as citizens where, if you, yeah, uh, that's a whole thing. That's a whole other thing. Because it was probably like the LAPD had something to do with it. And oh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a whole thing to it. Oh. Sounds like a conspiracy there. Oh, yeah, there's a whole lot of that. Well, speaking of conspiracies, for you young people who don't know uh, what happened 48 years ago today. That's, I don't know. 
We lost President Kennedy. Oh, he was assassinated. Twenty first, second, twenty second. Yeah, and for some of us of a certain age, we will never forget where we were at that time. Yeah. I was in eighth grade. Uh, the principal came in. He was also my teacher. Came in, announced the president had been shot, and of course we were all stunned. And then uh, a few minutes later, they sent everybody home. We all went home and turned on the news, and you know, just somebody will never forget. I guess people your age might equate it to September 11th. Yeah. You know where you were when that happened. Well, before it's, September 11th happened, I didn't have anything like. Yeah. It was all just reading what other people had said. Yeah. But yeah, now like yeah, it's basically the same thing. Yeah, you were, like I said, you're you're of age like we are. You remember where you were when that happened. So that was uh, what a time that was. Uh, and then uh, of course, Oswald being shot later, a couple of days later, you know, yeah. TV. It was a tumultuous time. It helped bring in some. Uh, that was the '60s. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of turmoil there. Um, have you ever seen this show, Mad Men? I haven't watched it. I've heard about it. Well, it's, it's set uh, the it's first. Like the '50s. The first season starts at the very end of the '50s, and then the second season skips a couple years, uh, and then the you know the third season skips a year mm -hmm. or two or something like that. But it, it's going through that time period, and they 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 had an episode uh, during the 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 kind of the assassination period, and and the, uh, I mean as far as I know, the, from what I hear from other people that were alive at the time, they were saying it was. It was fairly accurate as far as the portrayal of how regular people, <clears throat> you know, the, there was this sense of, um, you know, all of a sudden the world was real violent, you know, like yeah. all of a sudden, you know, these crazy yeah. things could could just yeah. happen that, yeah. that didn't really happen before. If it happened to the president, it could happen to anybody, you know? Yeah. But then, like, with a couple of days later, Ruby, you know, yeah. shooting off, yeah. like, it was just like, you know, when is yeah. this going to end? Like, what's going on in well, the world? That's why I mentioned conspiracies, because there are yeah. plenty of conspiracy theories about what happened there. Yeah. Did, did he really shoot him? Did uh, Was Ruby involved in the cover-up? And there's, there's all kinds of theories. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. Now, they had sealed some things that would be open 75 years later. Yeah. So we still got 27 years to go. So. There was something that was supposed to be unsealed a couple of years ago, and, uh, and then they pushed it back or something. I don't know. But yeah, by now, what are we, you know, what are we going to do with any of that information when everybody involved is, is no longer yeah, yeah. even here? Yeah, so. for the most part, yeah. yeah. President Kennedy would have been, I think, 91, hmm. he was 43, 94, I think he was 46 at the time. Yeah. And you don't, don't know how that affect, how affected the, uh, the country. You don't know what, what he would have done if he stayed in office. And, yeah. Or if his oh. brother had then, you know. Yeah, brother had lived, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff kind of coming yeah. from that that moment. A lot of crazy stuff in the 60s, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And we lived through it. We made it. Well, those were the godless times that created yeah. these priests well, today. Madeline Murray O'Hare, yeah. Yeah, so yeah so blame she's, her she's at fault <laughs> for the uh, pedophile yeah. priest yeah. scandal. Yeah, that's another thing. That, to try to pretend that this just happened in the 60s and it's a societal thing. And, you know, yeah, no, it happened before that. Yeah. It happened after that. Yeah. It's like um, with the weather for climate research and stuff. Like, we only have, like, back to the 40s or 50s of, of good, mm -hmm. solid, reliable um, weather data right. that places were, were keeping track of, of weather information. Um, but it's not like weather didn't happen before that. Yeah. Which with um, the bishop had mentioned when when we got to the topic of the the sex scandals in the church, um, he had said that you know this uh, this happens not this doesn't just happen in the church it happens it happens everywhere and and then he had said about uh, that it it kind of going back to all these priests that were ordained in the sixties and seventies during the sexual revolution and blah 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 as if to imply that. You know, it was this liberal yeah. society, society did it, and, yeah. and you know that was at, at fault. Well, you guys ordained them. You know, there yeah. wasn't a gun to your head yeah. to ordain these guys. You know, um, and presumably people older than them were the doing the ordaining. I would, have, <laughs> you know, I would imagine. You know, yeah. like, um, but I kind of lost my train of thought. Well, you know, the back then, if you were a gay man, you were probably in the closet. Yeah. And for instance, if you remember Liberace, for Liberace, very gay, but he never admitted he was gay in his lifetime. 
as a matter of fact, he would go on talk shows, and people like Mike Douglas would say, uh, gee, Lee, why, why did you never get married? Yeah. Well, we know why he never got married, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but he would have to pretend that he, he didn't. Well, but if you were a priest, no one asked you, why, why did you get yeah. married? So it was a perfect place for a gay man to be. I mean, that way he could, nobody's going to ask him, why don't you get married, you know? So, and there even, uh, I know Dick Van Dyke had a funny show about that. Uh, Sally wanted to meet a guy, and somebody, I forget why they invited him over. They'd known him years ago or something, and he shows up. He's a priest. Well, Sally said, thanks a lot for, because <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't going to work out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, uh, but it was a good way to hide if you were gay. Like, that was a good profession. No one, no one was going to question you. Why aren't you, with, why aren't you married? <coughs> yeah. So, and it's, uh, now it's funny you mentioned other so, so society thing because the same day we had that meeting with him, I had read in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel that the communication director for the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod had been arrested for child pornography. <laughs> so uh. it's, uh, it, it, I agree with him, it's, it's not just the Catholic Church, but uh, they certainly had the biggest scandal. Uh, yeah. So it happens, it happens everywhere. It's just a societal thing, as if some people, as we're finding out about Penn State. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he's right about, you know, it's not just something that happens in the Catholic Church, but... Um, but they didn't... How do we, how do we address that? They what, didn't what do, do, it, do They didn't do themselves any favors by trying to cover it up. Oh, no. That's, oh, no. Especially, like, I was, I was irritated quite a bit over the sudden, enormous outrage uh, over Joe Paterno for doing the exact same thing that the Pope, the current Pope did exactly yeah. that yeah. times 10,000. Yeah. Okay. This is a fact. These are, this, it's a fact. This has all been, they've admitted so much of it. It's yeah. been in the courts. Like that is known that mm -hmm. this guy, he is now the Holy See, you know, and, and one of the things uh, the Bishop mentioned was, uh, you know, when the church, the, the church is made of people who are naturally imperfect you know, well, the Pope is supposed to be infallible, right? Yeah, he's, okay. yeah his but words it. He, the, he was elected by other cardinals or whatever. Yeah. They picked him knowing that he had been in charge of the the, the, yeah, the, the committee that was basically yeah. the Inquisition hundreds of yeah. years ago. It's not the Inquisition anymore. He was the guy in charge right. of that, in charge of personally overseeing the priest abuse stuff. Him personally. He... Yep specifically helped yep. make sure these things were covered up. Yep. And that's, you know, Joe Paterno is the one we're going to freak out about. That's the sports, the sports guy. Well, okay. yeah, that's because he's here and he's in our midst. And, uh, and uh, some people have pointed out that Joe was a very devout Catholic. You think that he would have learned from the Catholic Church that you don't yeah. cover it up. You know? But, yeah, he's, well, Joe, I have a, my feelings on that. Yeah, they should all go up there. Penn State should be clean house and just start yeah. over. Well, yeah. they had in the in the late '90s. Well, even before there was a, a basketball ladies uh, women's basketball. Yeah, uh, the Renee something. Port Portland. Yeah, Portland was it? Portland or Portman or something Portland, like that. I think. Yeah. yeah, and she was like really, really yeah, anti yeah. Um, anti lesbian, yeah. anti gay. But, um, I mean, there's a documentary on that. I saw it on Hulu one night. I I just saw it. I was surprised there was a Penn State thing on Hulu. Um, <laughs> And it was free, so I watched most of it. But I couldn't believe that, you know. I mean, and so, you know, Paterno was there while she was there, you know. Yeah. So what, what is this culture among the, the faculty, you know, the staff there that, that this type of... Well, part of it is that the football program, I think, netted $52 million last year. Yeah. So it's, it's a big money. It's, it's money. And they yeah, want to protect... You know, the women's basketball couldn't possibly be... No, they don't bring in anywhere near that kind of money. She was a top coach, apparently. Oh yeah, she yeah, was she, like a she was a really good coach. Yeah, Penn State women had uh, I think for years. I don't follow the women's game that closely, but I think for years they were, you know, they're not champions, but they were top tier. You know, they were yeah. they were right up there. Yeah. But I thought it was weird when this when this came out. I was like, wow, I just watched that thing about the basketball coach. Like, yeah. you know, what's going on at Penn State? Like, yeah. why are they? Well, there had been rumors apparently for years about Sandusky. Yeah. Yeah, and I. You know, not being from around here, I don't remember this, but now I understand Louis Free, who's heading the investigation, is going back to 1975 to look at stuff. Wow. So we'll see. Oh, that's what I was getting at earlier when I lost my train of thought. Uh, if I can skip back, sure. we'll just rewind a little bit. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah uh, 
the bishop had said, you know, this this started in the 60s. Well, that's when cases started getting reported, right. which which was where I was going with the analogy of the weather. You know, like just because they weren't reported before then doesn't mean right. it wasn't going on for the last yep. whatever 1800 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, humans are humans, and some some guys are attracted to little boys and and little girls too. There was a case in Baltimore, a Merzbacher case, where he was molesting little girls, 11, 10, 11 year old girls. Hmm. He got away with that for a long time. He's in jail now and spent the rest of his life there, fortunately. So, I don't understand. Well, I've, I've heard people say that the people who are attracted to children, that's the age at which they were sexually stunted. Oh, that could be. Yeah, so I mean, never, there's got to be some sort of They never grew past that, you know, and that's why they're attracted to children. But then it's like, how do you explain anybody's, you know, sexual, uh, the things that they are attracted yeah. to? How do, you, how do you explain anybody's? You know, yeah. how do you explain a regular straight person? You know, how do you explain why does yeah. this guy like tall girls? Or why does yeah. this guy like short girls? Why does yeah. this girl like blonde well, guys? You know, yeah. like how do you explain those? Or rich things? guys. Yeah, or rich. They guys. like rich guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I've heard an uh, uh, anthropologist give an explanation somewhat of that. Uh, she said that you, know, you look at like what. Uh, men are attracted to and women like you name these features they'll all be features of youth which yeah. means she can reproduce and women are attracted to people of power and money well when she reproduces this powerful man who has a lot of money will be able to support those yeah. children provide for them so it's kind of an uh, uh, evolutionary thing that you know that that's what you want because yeah. it helps you survive so I think it at this point it goes a little bit deeper than that you know but uh, it would be a good, it would be a uh, a simple, exp you know, a, a useful explanation. Yeah. So, some things are kind of built. We're hardwired for some things, you know. Yeah. And and you're right though, about the sexual thing. Uh, uh, what explains why some people like certain sexual practices and others even yeah. among straight people? You know. Yeah. I mean, I imagine if uh, if everybody made their sexual preferences known, uh, what they like to do in bed, some people would be shocked by some of the yeah. some of the people you consider upstanding citizens. You'd say. You like to do that? <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> or they would all be shocked to find out that a great deal of them yeah. all like some of the things that they yes. thought they had to be embarrassed and that's shy right. of. You know? Yeah, that's right. So, things we don't talk about in polite society. Yeah. But since we're not in polite society, well, we won't yeah. talk about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the station would appreciate that. No, they would not. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, oh, if we got a note up there, December 3rd, the next York meeting. Uh, that's uh, at the Un Unitarian Universalist Congregation on South George Street yeah. in the Carriage House, if anyone wants to attend. Uh, we meet from 10 to till noon. You can stop by. We have uh, a new president this month, and he will be the president for one month, and then someone else will take over, and we'll, yeah. the board will decide that. We'll, figure but, we'll uh, have to figure that out. Yeah. I don't think we have any special guests for this month. I don't think well, we have any. Well, still time, well Jim, he's special. Yeah. Jim's the president. He's, really, he's special. <coughs> He'll be our guest. So, if you're interested in meeting with any of us, come on out. And uh, if you're an atheist and you want to meet other atheists, we get so many atheists who tell us, I didn't even know uh, yeah. this, there were other people like me in town, you know, and, and uh, there were groups like this. So, so come on out. And uh, check our website. And we're also on Facebook. Yeah, I'm not on Facebook, but that's too fancy for me. But uh, we're about ready to wrap it up. But we're about done for now. And I'll uh, see you in a couple of weeks. We'll be back with a free thought. Well, three three weeks because we don't have a show on the fifth Tuesday. So we'll be on the second Tuesday of uh, next month. Yep. And in the meantime, look us up on website or Facebook. And, and if Hopefully you have any we'll any comments.